We are getting things ready to go to explore the area. I have something that I want to show you guys. Really cool thing. I'm Roberta. And I'm Duca. And together we are on the mission of bringing this sailboat that was neglected for over 22 years back to life. So don't forget to subscribe and to join us every Monday for a new episode. Moving again. <laughs> so it's good to move. We've been here for, I don't know, three days already? Yeah. Uh, too long for the same spot, right? Yeah. Let's go to the spot number eight. Number eight. Yeah, we're going today to an anchorage that's not even the best protection from the wind that's going to start today. But it's a place we want to go and the, the wind's going to be in south east not southwest if it turns to southwest then it's worse and then we can move again try close by anchorage but it's a really nice place it's like a colony place because the island we live is a colony from portugal so oh, this sorry. Uh, sorry so this place is a little neighborhood they, they keep the culture and it's a really cool place and it's, a, it's, it's the oldest neighborhood here in our hometown yeah it's where they discover our hometown and also is where all the cruising boats stay because there is a small marina that all the cruising boats stay there or at least around and we have a friend with a mooring boat next to the marina and he let us use for a few days so we're gonna move there because this week is Roberta's birthday yeah. and she wanted to go there so that's where we're gonna go uh, my wish yeah. <laughs> let's go yeah Next step, I mean, say you up. So the idea now is to try to raise the anchor and not starting the engine. So better. Whenever I say go, you just turn to starboard side a little bit and go this way. I'm totally to the starboard and it's not going. Just turn the other way around, all the way. All the way? It is. Give a little bit of energy because we're not going to get out of here. Sailing? No, we're talking, yeah, sailing. <laughs> yeah. The only reason why we start the engine is because we are in a really shallow area and the wind was just throwing us on the sand bank. So it's just to turn the boat around and be able to set sail in the right direction. Because without a center board, sometimes you, uh, how you call you, drift. You drift too much because you have no center board and here is shallow so we have no center board now but at least we are sailing now and we can open the genoa now we're talking i can feel the difference it's mm -hmm. so cool it's just like one second it's just like whoop you're sailing more how's it going captain Good to be here inside. It's better than the night that's rolling and rolling. Um, which is neck. This one is good. Good. We have another two boats sailing close to us. Right now it's 2.93 knots of wind. As you can tell, we don't have much wind today, but we're just enjoying the moment and seeing an island from the hatch. That's so cool. Someone's having fun down I'm out there. I'm surfing the waves. We just move when we have some wave behind us, like now. So yep. As you can tell, no wind. We're just floating here for the, I don't know, half an hour maybe, <laughs> on the same spot. So, vote. Should we start the engine or should we just hang out here a little bit longer? Hey, 
as usual, we need to close out the Genoa because it's much easier to maneuver it quick if we need because we have so many fishing boats around. So now is the endless task of trying to find the net because if they had like nice flags showing where the net is, would, life would be much easier. But you can never see the net. It's just like a, a little, I don't know, jar of water, like a jug of water or something that you never find. We believe they are washing their nets. Today is gonna be one of these days that we put the Genoa up, put the Genoa down, put the Genoa up. Now it's time to open it again. Not put up, it's row and row, row Okay. Row. Let's open the Genoa. I have no idea how far this net goes, but I believe this fishing boat is hanging a net, probably just to wash the net, but there is a net behind. So let's hope we don't hit the net. We need to go more towards the port side, otherwise we might hit a net. Yeah, with the fishing boat, always come the birds. They're beautiful. I'm gonna get all the leftovers and cook something, rice. Chicken and onions and potato, some water. Food's ready. The south wind came and we needed to take the sails out and now we are just muttering. Yeah, we are 100% against the wind, and so and the anchor is right there, so it's the last, you know. But at least we got to sail a little bit today, that was awesome. Cheers for everyone. friends though <laughs> somewhere uh, as usual he sends me the location on Google map so it's just like <laughs> kind of tricky we have like two dots and we need to try to f match the dots but this is a really nice boat it's a wooden boat we are uh, uh, we are arriving at the boy boy or buoy I guess <laughs> we are arriving at the buoy our friends there with his dinghy to help us to get the buoy how the system works. We just have two, uh, how you call it, these ones that we Bridal? always use. Bridal? Yeah, two bridles and two backups, that's it. <laughs> but it's ready, we can. We just use the ones that are here. We just need to organize because he was not using this week, so it's just like, a little bit. <laughs> Even though we have some wind, at least we don't have any um, waves, so it's not moving, it's great. It's gonna be a good night. I hope so. <laughs> we are getting things ready to go to explore the area. Yeah, I, I have something that I want to show you guys. Really cool thing. First stop is gonna be in a boat that's a really special boat for me. When I was a kid, I think it was like 25 years ago, my grandfather, because my family works with concrete, with precast concrete, big piece of concrete, and my grandfather always liked to fish and he decided to buy a boat design and to build four boats, four trawlers, 51 foot trawlers out of concrete for him and three friends. So they did a co like a, I don't know, a cooperative, I think that's how you call it. And he used his knowledge of concrete and they built four really nice trawlers and yesterday when we arrived here i found out that my grandfather's boat that's not his boat anymore is right next to us so i'm gonna show you my grandfather's boat the boat that when i was a kid i walk on the top when it was just mesh like uh, metal mesh you know like when you have like just the mesh before you put apply the concrete you walk on the boat that you can see everything inside and you walk on the deck it's just 
It was amazing. A really, really, really cool experience. And you guys are going to see the boat right now. That's pretty cool. And it's the special thing is that it's the exactly boat. It's not the, the other three. It's the boat. Yeah, <laughs> it's the exact one. They sold the boat, I think, like two years ago or something, or maybe a year and a half ago. And now it's sitting here. And it is the boat. <laughs> Let's go there. Je vous présente Heyo. That's a. The name is not only. Yeah, I don't even know if the name is still the same, but that's Heyo. That's how I remember Heyo. Actually, it's much, it's much, much higher than I remember. So I don't know if our boat's so low on the the water. This one is really, really high on the water. I have a great memory of me, my best friend, that from childhood, that actually is one of our patrons, Eduardo. Me, Eduardo, and my cousin Joel, eating, uh, just getting ready the mussels right here to cook mussels and to eat. We once spent 10 days straight on a really nice anchorage with this boat. Cool fact, when you build a concrete boat like this, you need to concrete the whole thing at once. There is no concrete and then you just do like one time job. Like, and there's like a hose, like throws concrete. It's like, uh, I don't know how you call that in English. I'll try to find somewhere. But you have a hose and it's like. It's like spraying. Yeah, you spray, yeah, you spray concrete one time because you you don't want to have joints because if you have joints you have a failure a, a failure point like a point that can fail at some time so this was concrete one at one go that was so cool let's go around and i wish someone was here to show the inside maybe yeah we can we can try another uh, we will ask ivan our friend ivan that you know you guys saw already Ivan from that boat right there out there he lives here so he probably know the owner right now so we might talk to him and see we're gonna go there this even uh, really quick and then we go to shore and I don't know s check around shore I can smell coffee <laughs> <laughs> coffee time again <laughs> Time to go back to work while working. someone working. <laughs> yeah. Robert is gonna work on the kitchen because we need lunch and Ivan is gonna eat with us today. So you're gonna have a uh, pasta with sausage. I'm gonna work on something else that's been a long time we started, but we needed somehow to finish at one point because it's a really important thing for us to start moving north. We want autopilot. And in order to have autopilot, one key thing we need to install is electronic compass. So I'm gonna try to organize things to install the autopilot because we have the autopilot in place, we have the uh, the drive in place, but we need to do all the wiring. <laughs> the first thing we need to check is the manual. I want to do it properly. I want an autopilot that actually works. Good. <laughs> first step done. I was editing and our friend just passed by to say that the owner of Duca's grand grandparents' former boats here. So we are gonna see the boat inside, I guess, I hope. <laughs> I'm so excited. Yeah, I'm going. It's been years since I want to show Robert the boat of my childhood. And we are finally gonna visit, that's pretty cool.
concrete. Tem outra, like a house. Tem mais duas. It's amazing. Just going back in time 20 years. <laughs> It's pretty cool. It's our original, the anchor is the original one, since Duca's granddad built the boat, the antennas are the original ones, it's pretty cool. We actually went to my grandpa's house to try to find the pictures of when he built the boat, but unfortunately we couldn't find. But we found a really cool picture that I want to share with you guys, this one. Yeah, this was our first boat, me and my brother got as a Christmas present, this little dinghy, wooden dinghy, that later on my father installed a mess and became our first sailboat. That was a long, yeah, it was like 30 years ago. But now let's go back to work. Of course, this is a mess already, but at least I'm making progress. I already managed to hook up the ground for the autopilot unit, the Nimea 2000. Now I need to create the connection from here and here to there. This is the drive energy. This is the drive clutch. And then I need one more thick wire that's gonna go from this uh, autopilot unit to the battery. So now I have the positive connect to the breaker. I have the negative connected to the negative bus bar. I have the ground cable already connected to the CPU. Now I need to connect the positive and negative to the CPU and check polarity because the manual says you first, before you do anything, you connect positive and negative and check the polarity, if it's green, you can install the fuse. If it's not green, if it's red, you need to switch the wires and then install the fuse and then you do the rest of the connections. We have already energy for the CPU, we have energy for the drive, and we just need to connect the clutch. I'm gonna turn on the breaker and see if we have the right polarity. Yes, so the polarity is right. Now we just need to finish the wiring, but we are getting closer, closer. Time to go out. So here is our anchorage for the past, I think, like three days already. And here we are. But well, let's get back to work because otherwise we won't have autopilot and we really want to have the autopilot working. So this is the biggest problem of them all. We need to install this electrical, electric, electronic compass. And the problem is that this cannot be inside of the boat. In a fiberglass boat, usually this is inside of the boat. In a metal boat, this will have too much interference outside and anywhere with too much metal will have interference, but there is metal everywhere. We're, trying to, we're gonna try to install inside of this fiberglass panel and hope it works, because if it doesn't, I have no idea what we're gonna do. So we are gonna try to install somewhere here. trying to take longer because I don't feel like trying. <laughs> so we're gonna try first just with the mode function display, the little one, and see what we can do with that. Maybe we can configure it using that, otherwise we need to install the short plotter first. And then it's not gonna be today. Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. Let's go inside. So if we turn on mode function display, I told you. It recognizes that we have a compass. That's something good already. Yeah. yeah. The autopilot recognizes auto also the feedback from the rudder recognizes, but I think we need to do some calibration. We still didn't finish calibrating the autopilot, but I think the, the sunset. sunset's beautiful, yeah. so we need to go outside. Pajamas, no, give me one minute. Ready now? No, we're ready. <laughs> I'm ready as well. New boots. This, this one is our friend's boat, it's also a metal boat, a steel boat, and it's, I think, 99 years old or 100 years old. I think it's already 100. It's already 100. So this 100 years old boat, that's so cool. Can you imagine that? 100 years old boat? Yeah. A steel boat can last for a long time. This one is a cool one also, it's spray. We're just gonna park on the sand and we are gonna show the surrounds. It's a really cool area. So here is Santo Antonio de Lisboa and this is the first colony of our island. 
It's basically where Portuguese people arrive in our hometown and discover our hometown. So it's a place that they keep the traditions. You, we're gonna see some, yeah. you know, colorful houses. I think we mentioned this on the crossing video, yeah. but we have two towns inside of the town, two neighborhoods. Two towns. Yeah, two neighborhoods where they keep the traditional Portuguese houses and the government won't even allow you to take these houses down because it's just a way of keeping uh, the culture. The old church. I brought a, a guy with me today <laughs> to tell about the church. <laughs> you can't be serious. We are here in the future. Uh, like a <laughs> month later we shot this about the church in the Santo Antonio de Lisboa. But here, MP is today with me in Santo Antonio de Lisboa. So we are going to tell about the church today. Uh, the church was built in... 1750. 1750. <laughs> I have problems with numbers in English. <laughs> in Vols. And it's a symbol of the Baroque culture, the Baroque style, style of building, yeah. in the southern Brazil. Yeah, and it was cool. also declared a historical heritage. So it's a very cool place to be. Yeah. Colorful houses. Oh, she's wearing a mask, you need to wear a mask. <laughs> it's so cool. She's wearing a mask. I really like that. There are a lot of restaurants in this area and coffee shops, they are great. I've never seen this one. See, you can see new things in our city. Yeah. It's been two years we don't come here, so things change. Uh, this is a nice store, they do things with uh, ceramic. To build this pavement, they use stones that were used as ballast in the shippings coming from Portugal. That's pretty cool. So this is how thick the walls are like almost a meter thick and they were built using some clay clay bone, rocks bone, bones and also the whale oil yeah it's I, th I think it's like clay with whale oil it's, it's like a castle <laughs> yeah. it's crazy how when you have a camera you end up seeing things that you don't see isn't this photogenic These must be really, really, really old. And of course, we do have some newer constructions and some garbage, but you know, this is like... This is the traditional way of building the, Roof. the roofs here. Yeah, but enough of culture. We need to go to the groceries because we need to get some water. We have maybe three liters of drinking water on the boat. That's no good. Let's see what else they have. We came to buy water, not anything else. Roberto always wants to buy new things to eat. <laughs> of course. Yeah, that's a good thing about the boat. You just keep eating all the time because, you know, the kitchen is so close to everywhere. So you're always on the kitchen. Yeah. And you end up just eating and eating all the time. That's pretty good. I like to eat. Yeah. And now we have a neighbor. We have a neighbor that we eat lunch and dinner every time, either on our boat or in his boat. We just keep sharing, you know, like sometimes it's there, sometimes it's here. Tomorrow this is going to change. Oh, we're going to move again tomorrow. Yeah. yeah? I think we are going to go south to the south again to the front of my dad's house he's not even home but we have some we have some jobs to do yeah we have some tools at his house and we have we want to get some jobs done and also we need to wash clothes and take yeah, showers as usual <laughs> let's go to the groceries groceries As the idea is to move tomorrow morning really early, we need to put 
all the things in place. And also the autopilot that we didn't configure it yet, but we need at least to screw on the bulkhead, otherwise it's gonna be loose to set sail. We can leave like this for now. Tomorrow we set sail south because we need to go early because of the bridge. We need to cross the bridge, I think, before 7.30 in the morning and we take one hour and a half from here. That means we need to leave here 6 in the morning. We cross the bridge and then we stay there until later afternoon when the wind picks it up. So in between this time, we can visit Hobera's mom that lives in town. So at because, least this... Because, because, because... Oh. The day after is my, is my bath. Yeah. The day after is my birthday. Yeah, she's getting old. Hobera is getting really old. Much older than me. <laughs> Much older, six months. <laughs> yeah, but for today, I think that's a wrap. Let's, Let's see go. you guys tomorrow. Ready? Time to go, my friends. <laughs> what the f***? It's just bizarre. <laughs>